Well, a warm welcome to this talk and a welcome back to Professor Norman Fenton. Professor, thank you for joining us again. Well, thanks for having me on again. It's always a pleasure. So I've been watching the Office for National Statistics data, looking at the, uh, the vaccination status and mortality. And that was last updated on the 31st of May um, 2022. So I've had like about an eight month gap really in this data, but some's come out now. So uh, what is this data showing? What is the relationship, Norman, between vaccination for COVID and uh, overall mortality? Well, the, this data, which is on death by vaccination status, so they give it for COVID mortality as well as non-COVID mortality, and then they put them all together to give it for all-cause mortality. And therefore, by focusing on all-cause mortality, it should be able to tell us whether the COVID vaccines are safe and effective, because you'd expect the all-cause mortality in the vaccinated to be lower than the all-cause mortality in the unvaccinated. And as you say, this, 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 they were publishing these reports regularly, more or less every other month, um, for about a year up until July 2022, which, was, which had the data, as you said, up until the end of May 2022. And we and other people identified multiple flaws and, in that data. We actually complained to the statistics regulator about it. Now, maybe it was a result of our complaints um, that there was this sort of seven month delay in publishing the latest report. And as you say, it came out on the 21st of February, finally, two days ago, and it had the data up until the end of December 2022. Unfortunately, none of the core limitations and flaws that we'd identified in the previous report have been resolved. In fact, there are the same and worse. And that means there's massive biases which inflate the unvaccinated mortality and reduce the vaccinated mortality. So we've got these artificially higher um, mortal or cause mortality rates in the vaccinated than is the reality. Also, they've used new census data, which means that all of the previous data, if you want to check the sort of consistency, it's all changed because they're now using completely new data. So if you compare, for example, the May 2022 data from the previous report with the May 2022 data for the current report, it's completely different. Number of deaths is different, number of vaccinated, etc. Another problem is that they've now removed the January to March 2021 data completely. They've removed all of the data on the under 17. So we've actually got less We've kind of got less data than we had previously. There are numerous errors in the data. There's key data that's missing. And even with all the biases, even with all these biases, there is still no clear evidence that the vaccination reduces or cause mortality. In fact, the evidence tends to point to increased mortality in the younger age group for the vaccinated. Because if you look at the data, it seems to say that it's fairly similar in the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, the overall mortality. But this is because they're getting the number of people vaccinated wrong consistently. There's two problems. Well, in actual fact, um, the mainstream media sort of um, pounced on this as sort of a good news story about the vaccination. Because if you look at the headline figures, you'll see that they're claiming that the as I said, the all-cause mortality for the vaccinated, which actually started off, we can, we'll see some graphs in a minute, it's actually, although it's, it's fairly close now to the unvaccinated, it was consistently lower in the, uh, in the vaccinated, the unvaccinated, which would be good news for the vaccine, right? But the problem is that um, it's, even, even when it's close together, the problem is that the non-COVID mortality in the, um, if you look at the, if you just look at the non-COVID mortality, what you find is that the unvaccinated there have a much lower non-COVID mortality than the vaccinated. And this is where you see one of the biases. That's one of the biases. The other, as you said, so you've got a systematic bias there. But as you said, the other massive bias is they are simply underestimating the proportion of unvaccinated. And if you do that alone, just doing that, means that you artificially inflate the mortality rate in the unvaccinated and artificially reduce it in the vaccinated. 
So it really looks overall, if we account for these biases, that overall mortality is higher in the vaccinated group and overall mortality is lower in the unvaccinated group. I believe that if you do properly adjust for it, but I, I, I'm loath to do that. There are people out there already doing that and coming to that conclusion. I'm loath to do it because I simply now believe that the data is, that is so unreliable. There, is, <laughs> there are so many inconsistencies that I don't think you can, can, you can conclude anything from it. I mean, what, look, the, 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 the statistics regulator agreed with our major complaint last time, which was that any claims made on the basis of this data about vaccine safety and efficacy need to be retracted. You just, it's just not sufficiently reliable to make any such claims. So this is, this is your idea that this data is basically useful to make any deductions from the, the statistics regulator is in agreement with you and yet the Office for National Statistics seems to persist with this, um, what, what, what is highly questionable yeah, it's data. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mm -hmm. mess. And they had seven months really to clear this up. And uh, I don't believe that they've done so. I think really it's actually worse. Very disappointing. Should we look at some of the, the detail here, Norman, for people that want a bit of a, yeah, a, a, a bit more information. Um, so I think we should have here, this is your presentation, of course, um, death by vaccination status. Now th this first slide here, Norman, what's this showing? Okay, interesting enough, it's showing that uh, I think within 24 hours of the first, of the release of this, yeah. you can see they actually issued a correction on the 22nd of February, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. because there were, there was mislabeling of the months in various, um, in three, in two of the, in two of the five tables. In fact, there were other, this was pointed out by colleagues of ours and they, okay, they did fix that. But there are other errors which we pointed out, which they haven't fixed. But it kind of like gives an indication of the, you know, the shoddiness. I mean, yeah. all these amateur, all these people who are working for nothing, looking at this data, yeah. really probably could have done a better job than these paid professionals. I mean, they, they, we've waited, what, eight months for this and the sloppy, sloppy mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. This, so is, just, this is just sloppiness. So, yeah. Yeah. Very that disappointing. Was, um, W w worth mentioning, I think. Yeah, this so, was just a summary of our complaint to the, to the statistics regulator here. Mm -hmm. You can see that um, the, the statistics regulator agreed with our recommendation to ignore any claims about vaccine safety. Critically, the bit there in small, they also agree that the ONS underestimates the true population proportion unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. And we know for sure that that is happening again big time in this latest report. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that'll, that'll make the overall mortality in the unvaccinated look, uh, let me get this right way around, it'll make the overall mortality. Yeah, in, it, makes the, the, it makes the vaccines look safer than they are. Yeah, because it makes the, the unvac it makes the unvaccinated have a higher mortality rate and the vaccinated a lower mortality rate. Yeah, because we're postulating that overall mortality is higher uh, in the vaccinated group, in the younger age groups at least. But as you say, the data is so poor, we can't really yes. tell. Yeah. yeah. So we, we see that mainstream media jumped onto this pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, these are kind of like almost pre-prepared scripts, right? Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they are picking out this headline uh, plot, if you like, which is a plot of simply the never vaccinated against the ever vaccinated, this so-called age standardized mortality rate, which I'll explain a bit more mm. about uh, in a minute. And that's where you see it's, it does, you know, it's this artificially created lower rate in the vaccinated than the unvaccinated. So that's yeah. what they're crowing on about here. Yeah. And they're claiming that this therefore debunks you know, the uh, conspiracy the theorists, the, the so-called anti that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Key changes from previous release. So. Yeah, I just mentioned this. So we've, so we've now no longer got any data for the under 18. So that's, so we've got less data than before. And yeah. We're less informed than before. That, the data for the first three months that the vaccination, that's all vanished. Now, 
The ONS claim that's because they're now using the 2021 census data, whereas before they were using the 2011 census data, and they say they, they have to remove those because they're only, they've only got people who were alive at the end of March 2021 in the, in the latest census data. Yeah. But it's, it's actually very convenient for them to miss that out because we know that was a period where they were particularly... Uh, bad at misclassifying uh, recently uh, deceased vaccinated people. A lot of those who died shortly after vaccination were being misclassified as vaccinated. Yeah. Something which they said didn't didn't happen, but we know it did happen. And that period where that was those errors were most intense has now been removed. Disappointing, I think, and is also the best thing. Yeah, say because about of the that. census change. Yeah, and all this, we've got all these, we've got these many changes in the data. If you try to compare, mm -hmm. you know, the data that was there before with the data that's there now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that. Mm -hmm. So if you move on to the next one, we'll yep. see a kind of like a, a sample. So this is one of the main tables. This is what the data looks like. Yeah. This is um, table one. And what you see, I'll just sort of talk you through a couple of things here. What, what you can see is that for each month in this table, it's showing you, it gives you the, this is the all cause death. There's also, mm -hmm. you, you can also get the um, deaths uh, not involving COVID and deaths involving COVID. But this, these are the all cause deaths. And you can see that each month, if this is 2021, it gives a count of the deaths for all of the people in the various vaccination status. So you've got the unvaccinated, You've got the first dose less than 21 days ago. You've got the first dose at least 21 days ago, blah, 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 or up to the third dose or booster at least 21 days ago. And then you've also got a combined ever vaccinated. And that's simply lumping together yep. all of those who have been vaccinated at least once. Now, if you look at, for example, I just want to pick I've, I've highlighted them the May 2021 figures, right? Yep, 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 got those. So you can see that for the unvaccinated, there were 2,871 yep. deaths. And they give this person years. Now, people have been asking me, it, they, it's very confusing what this person mm. years is, because normally mm. you would just want to know how many people mm. were there in that category. Right, so what, what's this person years? Well, they're using person years rather than people because in any year, a person can be in more than one vaccination category. So for example, if a person gets vaccinated in July, then that person will spend half a year as unvaccinated and yeah. half a year as vaccinated. So that's why if, for example, you've got a thousand new people get vaccinated in July, then what you've got is 31,000 person days of newly vaccinated people in, in that month. Yeah. And those 31,000 days, when you divide it by 365, which is the number of days in a year, ends up at 85 person years. So that's what these person years are. It's a surrogate for, for the number of people, okay? And you have to do it, I guess you have to do it because you're doing it a at, at the monthly level. Mm. That's another reason why you have to do it in these person years. Anyway, so in May, the unvaccinated, 2,871 deaths, mm -hmm. and there were uh, 1.4 million person years yeah. unvaccinated. Yeah. Whereas if you look at the ever vaccinated, there were 30, yeah. there were uh, 31,180 deaths, and just uh, and and 2.4 million person mm. years. Now, mm. what we're interested in is what is the actual rate. Now, normally, if you were, if you want to want to work out a mortality rate, you would simply divide the number of deaths by the number of person years, and then mm. you you that you then multiply it by a hundred thousand to get the number of deaths per hundred thousand yep. year person years or hundred thousand people. Yeah. Right. But that's not the figure you see highlighted there, you see this age standardized mortality rate, which is a different figure, which I'll explain in a minute, but that it's very different. So whereas, um, whereas the, uh, the straight, the raw mortality rate, when you do that, when you divide the 2,870 by the 1.4 million is actually a number much less than that. I, I do it on a subsequent slide. Yeah. <clears throat> Here you get a much higher number. It's, so, it's the so-called age standardized mortality rate. And this is supposed to account, this is supposed to account for the age confounding, which is 
certainly inevitable because in the unvaccinated, a much higher proportion of the unvaccinated are young people mm -hmm. where you get very few deaths anyway, whereas in the vaccinated, obviously that's m most of the older people are vaccinated and that's where the deaths occur. Yeah. So that's why you, you do have to do, if you're going to lump everyone together, you do have to do that adjustment. And just moving on, you also see it's got this, to the right, it also gives this lower lower confidence limit and the upper confidence limit. And that's simply giving their so-called 95% confidence levels, i.e. they're 95% they're sure that that, mm. that metric wouldn't go below for the unvaccinated 1,648, etc. cetera. Mm. So, so that's that. But I, there's a couple of interesting things, even here. Um, oh, yeah, I actually got it. I've actually put down the raw mortality rate. So the raw mortality rate for the unvaccinated is 199 per 100K, whereas for the ever vaccinated, it's 1,282. So you can see the differences. They're very, they're very different. The raw mortality rate and the age standardized mortality rate are very different. But even if, if you look, for example, at those who were, um, is it the, I'm just looking at the, uh, yeah, if you look at the first dose, at least 21 days ago, yep. you can see that the age standardized mortality rate is way up. It's actually, it's over 5,000. That's much higher. That's much higher than the unvaccinated rate. Mm. But what, it, nevertheless, when they're all lumped together, you've still got these ever vaccinated still lower. Now, they might argue, why, why would there be such an incredibly high rate, mortality rate for those who are first dose at least 21 days ago? So these are people who didn't get uh, hadn't got, yet got to a second mm. dose. Well, maybe they could argue that's particularly high because those people died before they were able to get a, su a subsequent dose. So I don't know, but it's, it's a curious um, figure. And you do get these wild fluctuations in that age standardized metric between the different vaccination categories, which is another indication that something is not quite right with their classifications. Mm -hmm. so if you want to move on to the next slide. Yep. Yeah, so um, so I think you might be, yeah. So this is basically, I just want to highlight the problem. This shows why you need to have the age standardized mortality rate, okay? So at that top table is simply showing, it's simply showing the data for that May figure that we just looked at, where you've got the deaths in the never vaccinated and the ever vaccinated. And you can see that the raw mortality rate is much higher in the ever vaccinated than the never vaccinated. Yeah. Right, six times higher, but it's age confounded. I mean, what with the age standardized mortality rate, you have to break it down, you have to compute it into different age categories. Now, there's actually, you need more age categories than this, but just to, as a hypothetical breakdown, suppose we broke it down into those who are aged at least 50 and those who are aged less than 50. Then what you'd see is this phenomenon whereby, again, more deaths are occurring in the uh, in the never vaccinated here, in, the, in those who are over 50. <clears throat> so what happens is you get, a, you get this reversal of the mortality rate. So now you can see that in, the, in the those who are at least 50, the raw mortality rate is higher in the never vaccinated than the ever vaccinated. And in the, in the, in the under 50, the never vaccinated is also higher than the ever vaccinated. So although overall, well, overall, the raw mortality rate is higher in the ever vaccinated. Mm. It's actually lower in each of the different age categories. And that's an example of what's called Simpson's paradox. It's because of this idea of age confounding, which is why you need to look at the, the different age breakdowns. I mean, the raw data there shows... The age standardized mortality metric is supposed to do that. Yeah, because, I mean, the raw, data so there is, the raw data there is saying it's, what, six times... Death rates are six times higher in those vaccinated than unvaccinated. Yeah, and that was the actual figures. That's not hypothetical. Mm. Those were the actual yeah, May the actual 2021 figures. figures. But you can see, you can see it would be wrong. Any, any, if, if, if somebody, if an anti-vaxxer wanted to jump mm. on that, they would rightly be criticised for doing so. Yes. Because yeah. it's not a fair reflection Got of it. the true mortality, because you do need to look, dig down into the different age categories. Yeah. So if you move on... Yeah. The next um, slide. This then tells you. 
Oh, sorry, we are there, sir. Yeah. Oh, I was looking somewhere else then. So the age standardised mortality rate is simply a computed metric to avoid this age confounding. Mm. So it's a weighted average of the, these different age categorised mortality rates. And, that, and the weights are based on what is actually the 2013 European standard population, which is another thing I don't really like about this age standardised mortality rate. So let's just suppose... That, that in that according to that weighting, 60% of the population is less than 50, and therefore 40% is is over 50. Then the way you work it out is you work out for the never vaccinated, you're simply applying that proportion, 0.6, to the uh, never vaccinated who are uh, under 50, and then you're applying the 0.4, the 40% proportion to those over 50 multiplying it by the uh, number of deaths. So that's where you get the age standardised mortality rate for the never vaccinated there would be 1016.6 and for the ever vaccinated it would be 633. So it's actually now much lower whereas of course the raw rate was much higher. Okay, mm. now I've actually done a hypothetical breakdown into less than 50. The, the real ASMR there will be different. In actual fact you can't replicate we can't replicate the, and this is another problem with this ONS data, you can't replicate that age standardised mortality rate from the data that they're given, given because they're using more age categories than they give you the data for. If you go on to the next slide, I think I've got the... Oh, this just... So the next slide just gives you the general formula. Mm -hmm. So in general, there's more... You're going to have more than... You're going to have a lot of age categories because you want to do it by fairly fine-grained age categories. And you simply do, again, you're looking at the number of deaths in each age category, and you're looking at the proportion of people according to that European weighting and into each, each age category. And again, you're doing that same multiplication, and you're summing it up, and then you're multiplying by 100,000 to get the rate per 100,000 mm. people. So... That's just the formula. We'll skip through that. Go on to the... Uh, uh, I mean, with, with computerised methods the these days, you could break that down to uh, age by the day if you wanted to, couldn't you? Then it's over. Then you get... You, you could. You could. Mm. But actually, all we're... The whole... The, the problem with the age standardised mortality metric... Here's, here's the deal, right? Here's why it's a, it's a complete joke in this context. We shouldn't need to have it at all because we're not... Inter all we're interested yeah. in right, with this vaccine safety, is knowing what the rate is, what the raw rate is for an yep. individual, for a particular age category. Yep. So we want to know that, for example, for people, for children aged between 10 and 15, yep. what is the mortality rate? We don't need to do age standardised. We don't need all this nonsense complexity. We simply want to know the total number of deaths and the total number of people in each of in each in the vaccinated yeah. and the unvaccinated. It just completely obscures com compl completely obscures the, the data, doesn't it? It completely and unnecessarily obscures it. Now yeah. they do give us, to be fair, the ONS do give us the age categories, but they give us very broad age categories. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they give us age categories. For example, they give us age categories which are much broader than what are used in their formula, because yeah. we know in their formula they use age categories. Of a, with five year differences, whereas they give us ones at are most 10 and they don't give us any any breakdown of less than, I think, the age of uh, 39. Yeah, age of 39 yeah. below, we haven't got anything, any age, age categories. So here, this next slide was just also showing another weakness. Is another weak, this is a key, the key thing about the ASMR, right? <clears throat> that using that same example I used before, but using a different hypothetical breakdown now, yeah. you can see what will happen if in this case we just I just moved I just moved hypothetically I think a, a hundred deaths in the ever vaccinated from the aged at least fifty to less than fifty and yeah. the effect of that is that here overall the age standardised mortality rate is still is is of course lower in the ever vaccinated it hasn't changed but now in the less than fifty age category you can see the ever vaccinated are now higher than the never vaccinated. And that's the thing, you can have different, in different age categories, the unvaccinated might be higher in that category, whereas in another age category, it might be lower. And that's what, we, that's what we're interested in. So if mm -hmm. this was the real data, we could conclude here that for people over 50, you know, the vaccine is maybe causing less deaths, whereas in the 
and the fifties is causing more deaths. And that's an interesting difference that we need to know. Now, that was just purely hypothetical, because, of course, we've got the real data anyway coming. Yeah, OK, yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm getting frustrated now by not being given the data that we actually want. Yeah. So, so um, th yeah, this, want to move on to Yeah, that? this is, ideally, we should not even need, yeah, so have we yeah, done that we one? Yeah, we shouldn't need to use it. Yeah. Yeah, that, so that's, I mean, more or less, we've covered that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We're now going on to the actual data. Unfortunately, lots of people, I mean, I've done a little bit here, but, but actually lots of people have been out there producing very good plots from the, from the data. These are accurate plots that they're using. It's actually the data. There's no, it comes straight from the spreadsheet. So yep. here you can see this, uh, this guy, Tor um, Aarhus Gulbrandsson, has yep. um, published the, put out the plots for the, you can see the different age categories that are given. So we've got the, you know, the 18 to 39, the 40 to 49, etc. Yeah. And what you want to do, and what he's done here, he's plotted, he's plotted the all-cause mortality rate for each of those age categories with the different vaccination categories. And what you want to look at is that, I mean, I'm colourblind, but I think, is there a bold blue line yep. kind so of that, almost through the middle of each of these? Yeah, there is indeed, yep. Yeah, that was, that's, that's, the unvac that, that's the unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. So you can see in all categories, it's sort of, in the middle, it's lower than some of the vax categories and it's higher than some of the others. <laughs> yeah. So it's not really very convincing evidence of the vaccine no, it's not being uh, particularly effective there. No, indeed. Uh, so the, move on to the next one, because this is a way is the most critical plot of all. Yeah. Because what this is, this was very, this was very, very helpfully provided by uh, a colleague, once again, anonymous. But if you look at the... Um, are, are you happy? This is good data, though, Norman. You're... you're... Oh. You're happy with the interpretation? Oh, no, this is right, because this, this is absolutely taken straight from the ONS data. In fact, right. this is the plot. The bold lines are the exact plot that was in the Daily Mail. Right. Right, and, what, and this is what you can see. You can see this, it's, this, this, it's much higher. So it's the, it's the bold blue line is the latest. Yep. So that's the top one there. The, yep. That's, yep. the dotted line here, yep. the dotted line was what was in the previous report. Yep. So you see in the previous report, it had... You had uh, January to March at the beginning. That's now missing from the latest report. Oh, you can I see. that see. on the left there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yep. missing. Yeah. And, and you can see there are also differences anyway between... They yep. should have been the same between, between the months that were yep. recorded, between April 21 and May 22, but you can see they're different. Because they're using different population They've changed groups. Things. They've yep. kind of like backtracked on what their previous data was. And, and by, 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 you can by, see, the, if you just by the new method. The old lines... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just focus on the two bold lines. Yeah. Those were the lines. Those were the headline. That was a headline plot in the Daily Mail. You can yeah. check it. You can check it. It's absolutely what was in the Daily Mail. And yeah. that you can see is that, wow, the all-cause mortality rate in the unvaccinated is much higher than the vaccinated. That's what it's showing. Right? Say, say that and, again. Say that again, Norman. Again, say that last bit down, again. Say that last bit again, Norman, yeah. please. The, it's the, showing. It is showing yeah. that overall, yeah. overall, the the all cause mortality in the unvaccinated is higher than in the ever vaccinated. So that that on face value appears to provide strong evidence to support the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's why that that's why that that particular plot is the one that was um, right, emphasised right. by everybody who wanted to promote this data as being, you know, the ultimate proof that there's no mm -hmm. harm and actually a lot of benefit in the vaccines. Yep. Okay? Yep, so we're on to... Uh, all, yeah. all of that is blown out of the water by looking at the non-COVID mortality, because that's where you can see yeah. all of the bias coming in. Yeah. So yep. go on to the next slide, because this, yep. to remind ourselves, the next slide, this, I think you've, actually, because it's, we, we can't, that's it, this... This was from the previous report, right? Because this was the problems we identified in the previous report. So we want to see in the latest report if anything's been fixed with respect to this. So what you can see is that the non-COVID age standardised mortality rate is much higher in the unvaccinated than the ever vaccinated. And this is what is causing, this is what is driving the 
the all-cause mortality, because actually the COVID numbers are relatively small in comparison with the non-COVID rates. And what you can see is evidence here that this must be a problem with the data, because if this is non-COVID mortality, yeah. what the hell has yeah. the vaccination got anything to do with this, right? People, these should be the same. What this is suggesting, especially you've got that massive peak at the beginning there, which yeah, is this, that's evidence of just simple misclassification. So people right? never, never Why vaccinated. Why on earth though, should yeah. the unvaccinated be dying of non-COVID reasons? And the <laughs> yeah. other thing is, in, you see the ever-vaccinated, yep, that ever-vaccinated non-COVID mortality rate is lower than the historical mortality rates pre-COVID. So what this is saying, apparently, in their data, mm. is that according to this, the vaccination has some miracle death-preventing powers for non-COVID illness, <laughs> yeah. stopping that, people dying. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Whereas, whereas it's causing people to die who are unvaccinated for things other than COVID. <laughs> and because of that peak yeah. at the beginning, it's causing them to die at the very time when yeah. the vaccine rollout is, where it's rolled out. So when, you've had, when you roll out the vaccine, all the unvaccinated suddenly drop dead. Yeah. Yeah. Of non-COVID. Of non-COVID. Non -COVID. Non so what this graph proves is a systematic bias of confounding of one or more of misclassification of vaccinated deaths as unvaccinated, underestimating the proportion, the population proportion of unvaccinated. And also there is probably a healthy vaccinee bias here, mm. which is that the, you know, the healthier people, you know, people who you know, go to their GP a lot are the ones more likely to get vaccinated. Well, that's fine. But in that case, if there's such a bias, you, you would always, in studies like this, you would always adjust for it. So you'd have to adjust the all-cause mortality rates to take account of that bias. And they haven't done that. And all that bias is loaded in to that, to those all-cause mortality overall figures that you saw. Now, if you, the next slide shows that they have not fixed this problem in the latest data, it's actually got worse. So move on to the next slide. Yep. That is the same data, the non-COVID age standardized mortality rate for the, un, for the unvaccinated at the top against the ever vaccinated. You've got that same massive bias. These lines should be the same. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's just so the problem has not only not nonsense. been fixed. Yeah, it's got it's worse. Got a lot, it's got a lot worse mm. and they have not adjusted in any way for this massive bias. Yeah. So going on to the next slide, have they, have they um, fixed the problem of the unvaccinated proportion being too low? Absolutely not. So at the moment, I think they're estimating that the unvaccinated proportion overall is 10%, but it's much too high. We know yeah. that. Yeah. So this table, I mean, Claire Craig sent me this table. So thanks to her for that. It, again, it's taken straight from, it takes a little bit of work to get this data mm. out of the ONS data, but it's, it, it's straight from their data. Mm. And I think it was Igor Tudov, as an example, showed how you can prove this data is wrong. So he picked on the example there of March 2022 in yep. the age 50 to 59 category. Yep. And the ONS estimate of the proportion of unvaccinated, and it is only, it is only an, an estimate. They can only ever estimate how many are unvaccinated. They, they were saying it was six, just done, it was 6.19% of the 50 to 59 year olds were unvaccinated. But as he noted, if you go to the UK HSA week 13 vaccine surveillance report for that exact month on page 17, and you know, I'll send, you can have the slides, people can click on mm. that link mm. and, you'll, and you'll see this as evidence. No, no 17 you'll find that 87% of the 50 to 59 age group were vaccinated in March 2022. That means that 13% were unvaccinated, not 6.19% here. I, there were over twice as many, the proportion was over twice that, that the ONS is estimating. And that is a massive difference when it comes to calculating, because that is effectively the denominator yep. for these age standardized mortality, in fact, for any mortality metric, whether it's the raw mortality rate or the age standardized one. Mm -hmm. So that problem has not been fixed. And nor, go on to the next one, nor has the problem of misclassification. It's still there. This is a note, this note here, if you could, sorry, go back to the, just the note. Oh yeah, sorry. The previous slide. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is that text is taken straight from the note in the ONS spreadsheet. They actually say, you know, there's some people vaccinated but not including NIMS data as they died soon after vaccination, which is what we've always claimed was the case. And then it talks about linking these records, etc. But if you now move on to the interesting, there's an interesting uh, uh, email an exchange uh, here going discussion on. between. Mm. That's that's uh, Josh Gatesgar, who I a colleague of ours know very well. He's been, you know, he's one of the people who we, we, we can't see the de- we can't see the detail on that, Norman. So can you just give us the gist of what it's saying? Uh, so, so the gist is that um, yeah. So he he was questioning, you know, he he was asking how do you count classify the deaths of people whose jab status has not been linked to NIMS, and she so just gave remind, an us answer, what, remind us what NIMS is, Norman. If someone in our sense, Oh, that's the National Immunisation Management System, which is what yeah. the ONS is using yeah. to link to yeah. the NHS records for the vaccination status. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. So, no, it's OK. <laughs> um, she's, but yeah, the gist of it um, is that uh, it's, it, she can't resolve the questions about this, right? She says she's going to check tomorrow uh, to double check, you know, what, what, what they've done and... At time of writing, that check had not been done. So this is this is the representative of queries the, about. This is the representative of the ONS basically saying she's yes, not sure. Yes, yeah, she's in charge. She's in charge of this. <laughs> yeah. She's she's in charge of this uh, data essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So the problems, these misclassification problems, and even how they're doing the linking is not. There are there are clearly some errors there which have not been resolved. At least she's right? engaging so, and, and making and, an, and an effort to do it. Oh yeah, no. Look, I've always said the ONS. They've been very, always been very good yeah. at answering specific questions that we put to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they yeah. don't. Uh, I mean, they're good at answering. They don't always provide the answers we we need. Yeah, they, right? they, but at least they do engage. They, they, they don't they, us. They, they, they try. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's encouraging. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they do try, and then there's more. I mean, there's more. Claire Craig picked up some other errors. Yeah. Um, I mean, move through, and again, you can see there's a. <clears throat> If you move through, go to the next one. Yeah. These are Claire was uh, on the next one. Yeah, you can see that Vahi um, Nafila, again, he's another ONS person. Again, he's responding. He's responding to Claire where she's pointing out errors. Um, And indeed, one of the errors that she pointed out was the problem with these, the mislabeling of the months in in a couple of tables and they do indeed he acknowledges that mistake and he says that they're going to fix that which they did but unfortunately they didn't fix any of the other errors that are pointed out yeah yeah yeah. and then here a guy called ben who goes under uh, um this u.s mortality twitter he, he's very good he's done some very very good data analysis on the next uh, page next slide that one yeah and he sort of summarised, you know, his concerns about the data. Obviously, that he po- points out the missing data. Um, he pointed out some missing data in Table Five. There's missing, uh, there's missing data in Tables Two and Four. And yeah, so there's a there, there are various errors that are being picked out and haven't yet been resolved. You know what strikes me about this, Norman? There's so much expertise out there that all we need to do is is make transparent this data. D- d- don't mess around with A-standardised mortality. Just give us the data. And then people like you and Claire and Ben... Exactly, can, the raw can, data. Yeah, th- th- then you can crunch it to your heart's content and get real information out. We can actually get what we want to know rather than th- this filtered form yeah. of information. And they're going to say, well, we've given, they'll say, well, we've given you the age category. We've given you the age category. No, they haven't. They haven't. Yeah. They've given us... They've given us a, some of the age categorised data, but not mm. the age categorised data used for the age standardised mortality rate for a start, because that would need to be in groups in, as say, age categories of five years, not ten years for a start. And this would be the, this would be the ideal form of they need to. This would be the ideal form of peer review, yeah. wouldn't it? It would, yeah. And you see here, who's uh, this was? Um, this is also Ben, actually. Also, he's produced these. Uh, guys, you know, we look yeah. at the next set of graphs. There we go. So again, here, these are graphs which just, just look at the abs- He looks at the absolute. See, again, if you look at the absolute numbers of deaths by um, these different age categories, again, now you can see that the, you know, the, the ever vaccinated, you know, the numbers are much, much higher. There's 
you know, than the than the unvaccinated. Now, of course, mm. obviously, this is confounded by the fact that as people get, you know, in the older age groups, most people are, are vaccinated. So if you're over 90, yeah. almost everyone's vaccinated. So therefore, obviously, all, all of the deaths are going to be in the vaccinated. But if you go on to the next slide. So if we just take this example here for clarification, Norm, the, 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 this group here would be those that are unvaccinated. And then the lower group would be those that are yes. vaccinated. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the red ones, the top ones, those are the vaccinated. Oh, they're the vaccinated. Got it. Got it. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. There are far uh, more deaths amongst the vaccinated than the unvaccinated. Yeah. But, but this is all but of course, course. So it doesn't course, make sense. No, no. That, yeah. It's, it, well, it, it makes sense. But of course, you know, in the older age groups, more or less everyone's vaccinated. So of yeah. course, yeah, yeah. all of the deaths are going to be in the... Vaccinated. But go on to the next one, which looks yep. like COVID deaths, because this is very interesting. Oh, yeah. Got it. Now here, so just, just, just for example, take a look at, let's say, the 70 to 79 group. You can see that the, the absolute number of COVID deaths there. Yeah. It's, it's still, it's quite high. It's, obviously, it's much higher in the, in the, un, in the vaccinated than the unvaccinated, because obviously, still lots more people in that age group are vaccinated than unvaccinated. But... Forget about that. We were told, weren't we, that the vaccination was going to stop hospitalisation and death of COVID. You weren't going to die from COVID if you were vaccinated. Well, look at those COVID deaths in the vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So is it just the vaccinated here? The orange is the vaccinated? The orange is the vaccinated. There should be, if the vaccine was working, there shouldn't be any deaths there. Oh, that, that's, that's these ones. These are the vaccinated. So I'm confused. The, 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 the top, vaccinated the, at the top. The, the top line is the vaccinated. The bottom line is the unvaccinated. Yeah, got it. Yeah, the top line, all of them, apart from the 18 to 39, uh, you know, the, the, the higher numbers are, the higher one is the, is the, is the vaccinated. Well, that's just extraordinary. But, um, yeah, so it is extraordinary. And then you've got the non-COVID deaths. It's even so, more. So, so way, more know, people, even way, more way more people are dying in the vaccinated than the unvaccinated. Yeah, yeah, way more. And again, you see that for the non-COVID deaths there in the next, uh, the next the slide. The next one, yeah, is the non-COVID deaths, yeah. Yeah. And then, now, of course, as we say, that, that, that you need to take account of the fact that, you know, in those groups, you've got, you've generally got more people vaccinated than unvaccinated. But that's why Joel Smalley's analysis on the next slide is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is a bit, can you go to the next one? That one? No, yeah. next ones. Next one? Yeah, that's it. So, oh, sorry, so that he, one. Yeah. he then looked, he's, yeah, he's then looking at the, the, the number of vaccinated deaths relative to the vaccination population for that age group. And what you can see here is <clears throat> the ever vaccinated population, because it's, it's not a line, it's got the confidence intervals there. Yeah, it's yeah. basically generally lower than the number of people dying. And so he's what he says, this is his conclusion. Consistently, we see elevated mortality rates for the vaccinated since the start of 2022, when COVID represents less than 10% of deaths. Mm. But the mm. vaccinated are disproportionately, you know, more, more, more of the, all, all of the deaths. So again, this is real evidence, especially for that age group, that the, that the vaccine is doing more harm than, there's more risk than benefit to the vaccine in that yeah. age group. Yeah, that, that, that's really clear from that, isn't so, it? 18 uh, to 39s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then in the next one, um, oh, for non-COVID deaths, look at that. They're, they don't even intersect those lines. They don't even mm. intersect. It's, it's consistently well above, you know, the, the deaths are well above the proportion of people vaccinated. So, 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 so it, that, that's, it, that's it, clear. You know, the, the, deaths, the deaths in the vaccinated are higher than the deaths in the unvaccinated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In the 18 to 39. Well, it's the, you know, when you take what you take account, yep, yeah, and it takes account of the proportion of people vaccinated. So that is evidence. Why, for, why, is it, why for, isn't this on um, the front page of the newspaper? Lack papers? of safety. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's I incredible. Do it because it's, um, I mean, there's some other stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all. There are, there are some other graphs there, but I think that's yeah. probably enough graphs yeah. to see. So um, maybe, you know, there's a summary, I've got a <laughs> summary at the end. Yeah, so do you want to drop the summary? <laughs> Let's put the summary on. I don't know. So I don't know. Is it worth summarising this? Oh, yeah, yeah, please do. 
Yeah, so, um, well, none of the core limitations and flaws of the previous report have been resolved. Mm -hmm. The the higher non-COVID mortality rates in the unvaccinated, which was what we saw in the previous reports, Mm. just confirm that they've still got all these biases and confounders which they haven't adjusted for. We've still got the the, the massive underestimation of the proportion of uh, vaccinated, uh, sorry, of the proportion of unvaccinated in the population, and that's what's artificially inflating these all-cause mortality rates in the unvaccinated while reducing them in the vaccinated. And again, that's the thing. That was the thing that the mainstream media picked up on. And they've failed to look through at the details, which reveal that the, you know, the reality is very different to that. Um, Yeah, uh, there are numerous errors, again, in the data. There's key data, (coughs) it's very difficult to analyse. But the key thing is, even with all of the biases, even if you don't do any adjustments, we just use their data, there is clearly no evidence that the vaccine has reduced all-cause mortality. And if anything, it points to safety risks, especially in the younger age groups. Which is consistent with what we know already anyway, really. So it's, it's, um, yeah. so, so really, th- this is not giving us too much more information just because of the garbage in, garbage out aspect of this that, that we didn't know already to do with the, the, the very real problem of excess mortality that's going on in the country and indeed around the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, it's, so it's, it's quite depressing, really. Yeah, it really is quite disappointing. Wasted. I mean, do you know, I think about, time, about 10 actually, million a month they're getting for this. About 10 million pounds a month I think they're getting for this, aren't they? Is that right? Ah, I believe I mean, so. When the last, every time, the last couple of times we've looked at these reports, we've sort of said, I mean, when they did one before the last one, we said, oh my God, this is so, this, the data here is so awful. It's, there are so many flaws here. We, why, why should we be wasting our time even looking at it? And we said we wouldn't do it. And then the next one came out with, well, no, because the problem is, despite what the, the, the statistics regulator said, all the media, the politicians, yeah. We're using this data and the headline figures from it as evidence to prove that the, you know, the vaccines were safe and effective. That's, that's, that's why, unfortunately, we have to keep coming back and, and showing the flaws in it and showing that it isn't saying what they're claiming. And what the you mainstream know, media are doing is just cut and pasting the conclusions, the summary data from the Office of National Statistics, but like you and these other experts... Yep world leading experts that were looked at who actually take the, the core data that were actually allowed are coming to, to very, very different conclusions. Yep. Well, ONS, let's have the raw yeah, data so, and let, yeah. let's let Professor oh, Fenton and his mess. colleagues do it. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, yeah, we'll take, we'll take 10 million. We'll, we'll actually, look, John, we'll do it for 5 million. How about that? I, I put that offer to them. Yeah, I couldn't do it for any amount of money in the world, Norman. But uh, thankfully, we've got people like you who can, and and, and impressive expertise uh, that, that has been illustrated as well in this uh, in this video. Norman, great as always. Thank you for your time. You and me should be down the pub. It's a Friday night, but uh, thank you for giving us uh, giving that time up for us and. Uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, any further revelations. Please do let us know. Yeah, okay, thanks. Th- thank you.